earlier you said um, whatever emotions you have uh, or whatever you are going through or the bhavna, uh, anger, jealous, greed, happiness, sadness, anything that you are going through, um, examine it. So I am examining this in relation to whatever or in response to whichever object in front of me it is arising out of. So I am examining it. So is this the that observer observed on the process of observing process where explain so I see a luxury car in front of me and there is greed arising out of me I see a woman uh, who is conventionally considered to be pretty and there is lust arising out of me so the each of these emotions that are coming out is in relation to something in front of me so my understanding of this and going more in depth of this is that how it is going to work and is do I have to apply this to more and more objects? So the more you apply it, the more continuously you apply it, the more you see that you exist only in relation to objects. Eureka! The girl turns you a man. The car turns you a consumer. Who are you? Hmm? That moment and that's that it turns me. But that is not what I, sh I am. How do you know? Uh, uh, the, the Atma way. How do you know? <laughs> hmm? Unless you come to a particular firmness, Atma is just fiction, is it not? So instead of dabbling in fiction, it is far better to acknowledge that I am just nobody. I am almost like a public space. Available to all, open to all, being used and misused and trampled by all. The girl uses it, the car uses it. I am nobody, I belong to nobody, I have no identity. I am a public good. The car uses me. to run over the place. The kid uses me as a playground. So many use me as an open space for waste disposal. I have no firm name or identity. I become what the other wants me to become. The car manufacturer wants me to be a buyer. So I look at his car and turn into a prospective buyer. The woman consciously or subconsciously wants me to be an attending man and I turn into an attending man as per her dictate. If you can realize and come to this utter helplessness, you will revolt against yourself. You will say no more of this. You will then realize that all these inputs are actually assaults and invasions. And had you really been nobody, you wouldn't have felt bad about it. A stone does not cry against slavery, or does it? 
if the fact of your enslavement curdles your blood it means there is free spirit in you but that free spirit gets invoked only when presented with the fact of slavery if you do not know that you are enslaved your free spirit remains dormant or if you keep presenting slavery itself as free spirit even then the free spirit just remains asleep peacefully for the free spirit to rise and act and rebel you have to first acknowledge to yourself that you are neck deep in slavery and then there is a contradiction between the freedom of the spirit and the fact of your slavery now there is a conflict you need this conflict to arise you need an inner war Hmm? peace is great but false peace is deadly the seeker of peace must be present and ready to forego false peace and experience disquiet and turbulence awakening begins with suffering obviously it is not going to be pretty when moment after moment you are bombarded with the fact of your impotency and helplessness is it going to be pleasant not at all you would want to resist the fact deny the fact you would square man cringe but the fact is for real so therefore it must not be denied and when you admit and acknowledge that fact there is bound to be an inner strife by spirit you are free and in life you are in bondage these two cannot go together let there be a war hmm